Nikola Motors was once the new up and coming electrical vehicle manufacturer expected to blow Tesla out of the water. But with recent fraud allegations and accusations of lies and deceit, that seems to all be going downhill. Get it? So what actually happened to Nikola Motors? Well in this video I'll firstly be telling you who Nikola Motors are and what they're being accused of and what this could mean to you as investors and also giving you some of the most up-to-date information on this topic. But before we get started, if you've got any questions about anything I say today, please be sure to drop them down below in the comments and I'll answer them whenever possible. Also as a quick disclaimer, this video isn't intended to be financial advice as I'm not a qualified financial advisor, just some guy that makes videos and puts them on the internet. This video also isn't meant to slander the name of Nikola Motors or Trevor Milton, the founder of Nikola Motors. It's just a video documenting information that's freely available to the public and it doesn't contain any kind of secret insider information. Also this video is just based on my opinion and not proven fact. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's get into the video. So firstly, who is Trevor Milton? Trevor started his first business straight out of university selling security and alarm systems. He then exited the business a few years later to start a small website selling used cars, similar to eBay or Craigslist or auto trader in the UK. This business didn't go too well and eventually folded. But Trevor didn't let that failure get to him and shortly after started his first alternative energy vehicle business, D-Hybrid. D-Hybrid won a vehicle conversion contract from a big listed US transportation company, Swift. D-Hybrid failed to meet the terms of the contract and Trevor also exited this business, then starting his second alternative energy vehicle business, Nikola Motor Company. Now, D-Hybrid was only the start of Trevor's problems. The company won a contract worth around $16 million to convert 800 diesel-powered trucks into natural gas-powered vehicles. The company started with a trial run of around 10 vehicles, making specific promises to Swift about the energy and cost savings that they'd be making. D-Hybrid, unfortunately, only managed to deliver five of the 10 required vehicles. The cost and energy savings as well fell dramatically below what was required. Trevor then sold the business. Now is this a giant fraud? Maybe not. Trevor was obviously over enthusiastic about the company's potential and its ability and therefore under delivered on its promise. This is shown by the legal action taken by Swift here. Now this isn't the first time that Trevor has been over enthusiastic about a business. It was a similar story with his used car sales platform. Trevor overhyped the traffic to the website by a little bit. Okay, Trevor overhyped the traffic to the website by quite a lot. He also overhyped the completion of his hybrid conversion systems when they weren't actually completed. He also overhyped that he had advanced turbine technology when in fact he just ordered some turbines that were currently in development. He also overhyped the sales value of his companies and also overhyped the fact that he had a real fully functioning truck to debut when actually it wasn't fully functioning at all but we'll get back to that later. Now I think there's a fine line between being excited about your product and overhyping the results a little and outright lying. We all tend to over exaggerate. Let's say you're playing golf and you hit possibly the best drive of your entire life. How far did it go? Probably like 300, maybe 350 yards, when actually it probably only went 250 to maybe 275 or 300 yards at a push. Now is that lying or is that just overhyping your abilities? And does that apply to what Trevor has said that he has or what his companies can do? Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Let me know whether you think Trevor is lying or just overhyping his abilities a little. Nikola Motors revealed a so-called built, fully functioning truck back in 2016 and in 2018 released a video of that truck moving down a road. The company recently exploded after its IPO in June and in September it announced a deal with General Motors worth around $2 billion. All of this media attention around the IPO and the fact that Nikola Motors was an alternative energy vehicle manufacturer producing vehicles powered by hydrogen or batteries or natural gases caused the company to catapult into the spotlight. Pre-IPO the company was worth around $1 billion and post-IPO the company was worth at its highest around $34 billion. This was at a similar time that the Tesla stock was on the rip up and therefore any investors that kind of missed the Tesla wave could get in and invest in Nikola because they were the next best thing, especially as they had already developed hydrogen powered technology. To put into perspective just how crazy that valuation is, the valuation of Ford Motorco is somewhere around 28 billion. 
Ford last year had sales of around 150 billion, profits after taxes of somewhere around 50 million, assets of somewhere around 250 billion, and shareholder equity, so assets minus liabilities, of around 30 billion. Nikola Motors, on the other hand, had sales of around $40,000. Yep, that's right, 40,000. It had a loss of around $250 million. Yep, a loss. It had assets of around 900 million and shareholder equity of a similar level. Most of those assets was cash and most of that cash came from the IPO. Now obviously this valuation isn't based on what the company is doing right now, but what it could do in the future. Uber loses billions and billions every year, but it has a crazy high valuation because of what it could do in the future and the fact that it's already revolutionizing public transport. So what exactly are Nikola Motors and Trevor Milton being accused of? Well, in September 2020, a company called Hindenburg Research released a report full of allegations against the two. Now, I do want to preface and say that this report isn't mine and it was released by Hindenburg Research and I don't work for them and I'm not part of the class action lawsuit of investors suing Nikola Motors and therefore don't have any secret insider information. I'm just documenting the opinions of the Hindenburg Research paper, which haven't been proven as factual truth. The Shareholders Foundation filed a lawsuit against Nikola Motors and Vector IQ, which is the company that merged with Nikola to help take it public, of not doing proper due diligence. It states that Nikola Motors overhyped and overstated its in-house design and manufacturing capabilities and also overstated its natural gas production capabilities as well and that Vector IQ should have picked up on that with proper due diligence. The research paper also states that the Nikola one released in 2016 that was supposed to be built and fully functioning wasn't actually fully functioning at all and the Nikola one in motion video released in 2018 showing the truck moving down a road was actually rolling down a hill without any propulsion of its own whatsoever. But so why is this a problem? Okay, they told a little fib about some technology that isn't quite complete yet, or another little fib about a vehicle that doesn't quite work yet, but it will soon, right? Or another little fib about an in-house design team when they actually outsource their products, but they're gonna bring it in-house soon as well, surely. Well, obviously the problem is that the company has IPO'd and has a lot of external investment from the general public. The company was once worth around $36 billion. Around 50% of the shares are owned by individual shareholders like you and I. Around 12% of the shares are held by mutual funds and other institutions, and the remaining shares are held by insiders at the company. So that's billions and billions that's been invested and traded by individuals based on what the company is going to do in the future, or what the company could do in the future. But was it all fluff? Will they ever finish their next gen hydrogen power technology, or their battery powered technology, or their natural gas powered technology? If you're enjoying the video so far, be sure to drop a like down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Only about 15% of you are actually subscribed, which is really low. So subscribe, it's free and you can always unsubscribe later if you want. Okay, so maybe Nikola Motors don't have a fully fledged product just yet and also don't have the technology just yet either. But surely they've got a crack team of staff to make these discoveries and to make these propulsion systems energy efficient and cost efficient, right? Well, their current director of hydrogen power and infrastructure is an ex-concrete pourer and contractor from Hawaii, Trevor's brother. But maybe he has an excellent scientific skill set that he's using to develop new methods of hydrogen propulsion in a cost and energy efficient manner. The skill set that he's just been hiding all these years while he's been pouring concrete. Hmm. But what about their head of infrastructure development for the network of over 700 hydrogen dispensing stations? Well, he was an ex-golf club manager. But again, maybe his golf club management skills were just so good that Trevor had to snap him up to oversee the implementation and construction of over 700 refueling stations. So what about their chief engineer designing the axles and the drivetrain for these alternatively fueled vehicles? An ex-pinball machine repairman and software developer. But again, maybe he just developed that engineering software so good that he was essential to the plan. So they don't really have a fully fledged product based on public information. They also don't quite have the technology either, nor do they have the crack team of staff required. 
and that is where the problem lies. Customers have put down over 5 million in deposits from their recent SEC filings and investors have invested millions and millions into the company during its IPO and billions worth of the stock has been traded since. So what are the most recent updates? Well, Trevor resigned from his position at Nikola Motors and the Executive Vice President of Technology recently gave a speech at a Hydrogen Summit stating that they have a number of patents pending. But from a quick bit of digging, it seems that these patents are for a number of cell membranes and heat shields. Not exactly the fully fledged hydrogen powered technology, but just small components in it. He also noted that the natural gas powered Nikola One will be going into production in late 2021, a little bit later than expected. And a hydrogen powered one will be following in 2022. But apparently they already had this technology developed years and years ago. He also announced that they're still committed to release the development of a hydrogen station in 2020 and they're going to start working on electric vehicles in 2022. But again, I thought this technology was supposed to have already existed. It's a bit of a race against time. Institutions and investors can't yet sell their shares because of the lockup period, which doesn't end until November, December time. Therefore, this could all just be a ploy to keep the price of the stock high enough for insiders to make their exit. But obviously, that's just opinion and not based on any truth. As always, guys, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some of my others. Alternatively, subscribe to the channel and ding the notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.